everybody. My name is Christine. I'd like to take this time to introduce myself as the moderator and thank everyone for attending our CTEC webinar. Uh, we're going to get started here. I thought to start us off, I'd give us a little bit of information on the CTEC company. CTEC is a developer and manufacturer of proven educational programs and training aids. Our primary goal is to prepare students for jobs or additional education, making them lifelong learners or employing them as unique entry-level hands-on uh, training graduates. So almost every piece of industry is being transformed by technology. We have banking online, we have smartphones, we're replacing cameras, music is being published online, TV is very high tech. So we are all experiencing the move towards technology. So I think it's very important that we address those things today and tell you a little bit more about our programs. On this slide, you can see it says, our model equals your student success. And we have a lot of people here to tell you about how we really encourage success in the students. Uh, for example, as I already introduced myself as the moderator. We also have David Brady here. He's our VP of National Business. We have Larry Benjamin. He is the Train the Trainer Master Instructor, who will go over some of the programs with you. And we also have William McGurgan. He is the Director of Training and Programs. So you'll hear a little bit about uh, you know what he has to add as well. Um, we want to get to the nitty-gritty and tell you how our programs serve people of all ages, all backgrounds, uh, different walks of life. They can all enjoy the program and we have been proven successful in many different avenues so we can share that with you as well. On this slide is how our model works. We're providing real entry-level job skill training through a proven model. So this is basically how we do it. It's an integrated model and it encourages stackable credentials. So we'll go through each one of these individually, but we always start with a goal. We'll involve industry. We pull in education. We have methodology, support, and of course the results of the students getting hired. On this slide, we're showing you our industry partners. This is the second cog in that uh, methodology wheel that we were showing before. So these are the partners we've worked with in developing our current standards. We develop them so that we know that they're sure they're learning the industry's best standards and practice, and they get the greatest competitive skill set. Our VP of National Business, David's going to go over these in a little bit more detail later on. In this slide, we wanted to address some career awareness and job skills. So I wanted to kind of pull in here a little bit about what we do uh, in engaging the students. We work and we sneak some STEM aspects in there. I know everybody's very concerned with science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. Um, you know, so in our programs, we pull in some angles. We pull in calculations and mathematics. We pull in all these different aspects that the students don't realize they're getting the training on. Everything is standardized. We have proven completion rates. But it also helps the student uh, have a self-worth feeling, a feeling of accomplishment that they've you know, completed a program and that they've gained a certification. And employers really place a value on our students and their skill sets. For example, Secretary um, Solis of Labor was discussing just this month that we have a plague of mismatched skills and STEM backgrounds. She did an interview on NBC's Education Nation and highlighted the needs for programs like CTEC programs that would engage and not intimidate while offering real opportunities for our students. So to give you an idea of the program attributes, our programs are short-term training. So they're 30 to 40 classroom instruction hours. Everything is standardized like we've been talking about. They're engaging. You can't look at one of our boards and not want to actually go up and touch it and play with it and look at things and really test things out. They encourage a lot of critical thinking. We, of course, do career awareness and job skills. We have industry-recognized training. And then we do a lot of stackable credentials. So you're rewarded with multiple industry credentials as you build on each program. In this slide, I wanted to tell you about how we meet the needs of your students. We talked a little bit about it before, but we really instill a lot of confidence. They have a certification and an in-demand occupation. They have lots of employment opportunities. We've gone over how they have STEM alignment, but we're also aligned to your common core standards as well. So there's lots of benefits to your students. 
So we've told you how we meet the needs of your students, and this is how we meet the needs of your teachers as well. We have a standardized model. We conduct teacher training. Everything is turnkey, so all the materials are provided. I know a lot of the teachers that I work with currently really enjoy the fact that there's no lesson planning involved. Everything's done for you, so they don't have to spend the time. It's already been developed with our industry partners, and it's ready to implement curriculum. So I said that the uh, standardized training was uh, standardized for the teachers as well. So here's a picture of our instructor training. Larry is actually one of our master trainers that you'll hear from in a little bit. And this is really great because we teach the teacher exactly how to teach the student. So we teach them ways to help the student. We allow them to certify the student. We teach them little fun ideas, or rather Larry teaches them little fun ideas about how to really get the students to remember the different theories and concepts. So to give you an idea of time for instructor training, it varies a little based on which program you're looking into. Uh, to give you an example, our copper training is about two days. As as well as our energy management training. Our fiber is about two and a half days. And most of our instructors come here to our offices in New Jersey and spend a couple days with us. I tell everybody to come hungry because we feed them well for lunch. So it really is a chance to get to network with other instructors while learning exactly how to fulfill the needs of your students. This uh, slide covers our multiple CTE tracks. So we're very adaptive. We can be put into many different uh, vocational programs. We can be run as an elective. This is kind of a list of where we've fit into in the past. So we could be under the electronics, or we could be under a vocational. We could just be you know, offered as a separate elective for your students. And keep in mind, when you're thinking about where your programs could fit in the CTE tracks that your school currently has, you, know, you can think about how how you can pick different programs, you can stack them together, you can run them standalone. And when you listen to Larry, I'm sure you'll get a few more ideas about how you can work it in for your particular location. Okay, in this slide we have our pyramid. This is how our programs are designed to be set up. It starts on the bottom with telecommunications awareness. Those are our smaller CPS programs. Those are a little shorter. They're 10 hours each. They're to really begin career awareness. Then we move into our basis, telecommunications, and we go right up the pyramid giving them stackable credentials as we go. So you can see we'll take you through telecommunications, copper, fiber, our telephone systems, the audio video installation, energy management, Management, and then we finish up with employability, such as our Connecting to Business program. Okay, this next slide addresses the model. This goes back to the education cog in our model wheel here. And we're talking about how our students learn. We have set this up so anyone can learn. Our programs are written on a seventh grade reading level. We use a lot of differentiated learning. We use a lot of charts. We reinforce everything with media. So while your instructor is teaching, you can have media playing on the smart board while they're walking around and make sure the students are learning. And then we have lots of different ways that the students themselves can learn with the differentiated learning. So there are charts, there are pictures, there are words. So if you're like me, you get not only the words on the paper, but you get to watch the instructor demo the, the activity or demo the construction of the cable, and then you learn a lot better by doing it yourself. This slide is all about our educational themes. So we really work very hard here at CTEC to make sure your students are learning well. So we're really going to work on things like scaffolding to build on what they learn. That's why taking the Intro to Telecommunications program is so important because it really gives them the base knowledge. But we do it in all of our programs as well. So we teach them a little bit about energy, kinetic energy, how it's made. And then in our energy management program, we walk them into how do they save energy in different forms that they can utilize in saving their energy. So that's an example of our scaffolding. We already talked about uh, graphics and demonstrations, charts. All the means of assessment are there, so you have smaller activities where students can check their knowledge or instructors can have them turned in and graded to make sure the students are learning correctly as well. Okay, I think you've heard a lot from me for right now, so I want to introduce Larry Benjamin. Like I said, he is our Train the Trainer Master Instructor, and he's going to walk you through our programs, the different technology, and the different equipment that you get in each one now.
Hey, thanks, Christine. What can I say about the CTEC curriculum? Well, let's start at the beginning with the intro to telecommunications. I like to call this the table of contents for the CTEC programs. All of the courses are present in this introduction, meaning that while seen, there's not much detail presented. This overview is important so that all the CTEC courses can be seen in context with each other. The logical progression from one to another is demonstrated, and the concept of scaffolding, or building on a learned foundation, is made clear. Similarities on the course presentation are outlined, as industry standards are taught, tools, equipment, and devices used in industry are presented, and an emphasis on critical thinking is developed. All methods of telecommunication are presented, ranging from smoke signals to satellites. All CTEC materials are presented in a cross-curricular manner that is STEMS compliant, and yes, I'll say it again, aligned to the core curricula. We've done that, so you don't have to. Science is discussed when encoding and decoding are presented. The students are encouraged to develop their own codes to facilitate communications. Historical studies are covered with some of the great but often unsung communications methods used, like the heliograph stations that connected the southwest using reflected sunlight off mirrors mounted on hilltops. Some of these stations are still standing today. Engineering is covered when the technology of cell phone call transfer is presented. The math, well, more on math later, but trust me, it's in there. A teaching device that CTEC developed for the hands-on component of this presentation is it's called the TAP. As with most CTEC training aids, it is intended to be used by two students at once to foster cooperative learning, and then be used with another group of two students with their own tab to develop a communication system from one tab to the other. With this single device, the students can compare and contrast advantages and disadvantages of all methods of communications, from copper media, infrared remote control, fiber optics, and radio frequency communications. What else is there? The hands-on components of working with the tab reinforce the correct and safe use of tools, introduce the industry term configuration, which is a pattern of connecting wires, the process of testing, and problem solving or troubleshooting. Well, wait, you heard it here first. Copper is not just for computers anymore. That's right. The techniques learned in the copper course can be used for telephone, security, control, entertainment, and automation. When smart home technology is introduced, copper is used in the networking, security, entertainment, and automation components. But smart means that they all work well together and the technologies converge. I'm going to ask you to join me on a little trip. I'd like you to find one of your students and then with me crawl up inside their head and take a look around. Say, geez, does it look very, very well ordered, particularly well ordered in here? Well, if it's like most of the people I know, probably not. We want to introduce an ordered thought process, however, that can be used step by step to solve problems that occur when bad things happen to good techs. This is industry speak for troubleshooting, and that's a very marketable skill set. Well, so as with most good things, when the intro to telecommunications comes to an end, your students may find themselves asking, is that all there is? Well, actually, that's not all there is. This slide indicates that some career awareness can be developed. This means career pathways are discussed. Okay, okay, let's get to it. We're talking about jobs here. Well, actually, we'll be talking about jobs at the end of the presentation. But at this moment in the curriculum, we're stressing the necessity of staying current to the industry and perhaps becoming lifelong learners. Students will be well versed in all phases of installation and maintenance of copper-based networking systems found in industry. This includes data, voice, and video for both commercial and residential applications. Students will work with actual cabling and connectivity devices as they terminate. That means connect, not kill, test, and troubleshoot copper-based systems. 
Now is perhaps a good time to state that all the CTEC course materials and workstations are portable and self-contained. That's a significant advantage here in that it's a dedicated classroom for these courses is not required. No special computer lab or, for that matter, no tech room is necessary. A general purpose classroom will do. As a matter of fact, nothing other than a classroom is required. All materials, tools, instructions, lesson plans, and anything else required to get your students to certification is provided. The copper-based applications for Twisted Pair include, but are not limited to, computer networks, POE, or Power Over Ethernet Automation Systems, and PTZ, that stands for Pan, Tilt, Zoom Camera Systems, Energy Management and Monitoring Systems, the Cutting Edge A-Bus Audio System, of course, Telephone and Internet Connection, and the Emerging Smart Home Smart Grid Connectivity. Want to learn more about this? You'll find it in the Energy Management Automation course. You see how that works? Coaxial cable systems support internet, television, security, entertainment, and satellite communications. And the wireless technology, yes, we cover this in copper because every wireless network has a wired component included. It's governed by the standard 802.11, which defines all aspects of wireless network systems but Bluetooth. This slide shows some of the worldwide industry standards your students will learn. The T568A, T568B, and USOC configurations are discussed, and the legacy or history for their development is discussed, as well as the required industry practices necessary to comply with the industry requirements. And those are all covered with the 568A standard. The breakout array on the ACT panel is used extensively to build confidence and verbal communication skills required in industry to be proficient in troubleshooting four-pair cabling installations. We introduce the student to every cable problem known to man in that breakout array. Developing the practice of writing a record of what is done while in class, for example, using the five Daves as a written record, is stressed as a required job skill. We all know the job's not complete until the paperwork's done. You see here that as technology advances, CTEC courses are revised to keep up. For example, with the development and deployment of the compression construction methods for coaxial connectors, when that became the connection of choice for the broadband satellite broadcast industry, CTEC released the compression addendum to the copper course. The beautiful woman in the upper right corner is a representative of history. That's the component showing up here. Those of you my age might recognize her as Hedy Lamarr, the talented actress of the 40s. Yeah, that's the 1940s. But wait, there's more. She also developed the spread spectrum technology used today in cell phones and Bluetooth devices. Next time you make a call, a cell phone call, Tip your hat to Hetty. Beautiful and brilliant. Well, i got to tell you, you'd not be alone if you looked here and said, man, it looks like Greek to me. But soon your students will recognize these terms used often in industry. We concentrate on three areas of expertise. The first I call book learning. That's the standards or the rules of the game, the names of things, how they're used. Then we concentrate on hands-on skills. How do you make stuff? And the third one is the troubleshooting and repair component. That's the critical thought process that enables students to compare the problems that they experience with a correctly functioning system, evaluate the differences. From now on, that's referred to as the trouble, and then make it go away. In a 40-hour course, we cannot build an expert nor would we particularly want to. The term expert implies that they know it all and there's nothing else to learn. We want to build a network cabling specialist that is able to compete favorably in the job market because the employer recognizes that this employee will be productive right from the very start. 
They don't have to train them. They don't have to educate them. They don't have to evaluate their stick to in the job position. We do, however, introduce the students to more advanced technologies to spark an interest in developing an additional skill set and therefore becoming more valuable to the employer. Well, so I guess that's the copper program in a few slides. Let's move on to the fiber optics course. In this course, students will learn the theory behind fiber optics transmission systems as well as develop and practice skills required for effective fiber cable terminations and splicing. Other topics covered in this course are cabling standards, fiber optics loss budgets, cable routing, placement, and the testing and troubleshooting of fiber optic cabling systems. Well, looking at this terms, it may seem as if the fiber program is an applied science course. However, CTEC makes the science in fiber easy and enjoyable. Okay, okay, here, here we take the principles of light and other factors that can be intimidating and relate them to known and familiar concepts. Students learn quickly and with a higher degree of retention. It also doesn't hurt that the course is rich in hands-on activities that take the science of light and make it the magic of light. One of the principles of fiber technology discussed is attenuation. That's not one more than annihilation. Attenuation in light is the same as this with sound. More on that in the home entertainment course. You see how that works? It's defined as loss of signal strength, and in fiber, the light loses strength. That means it becomes less bright the farther it travels down the fiber. A practical example of this is how your headlights lose brightness the farther they shine in the fog. Well, in fiber, fog is not a consideration. It's not the cause of attenuation, but other causes are discussed. Attenuation can also be measured and is one of the characteristics of a fiber termination upon which the student will be evaluated. The students will terminate three types of fiber connectors and will become proficient in two types of construction methods. The industry standards and best practices will be stressed and will be two conditions that the students will be evaluated on when performing these constructions. Later, we'll discuss what happens when bad things happen to good techs. In other words, when they meet the guy with the backhoe. Fiber is so small, the students will evaluate their connectors using a 100 power microscope. The tech in the field, as well as the instructor, will use a 400 power microscope. Now, C-Tech has developed a camera that can be used with this field microscope and then attached to a computer. Once attached, the image from the microscope can be viewed captured as a digital image or projected onto a screen as any computer image can. This allows a class-wide observation and builds confidence in the students. This also puts real-world equipment into the hands of your students. Well, you remember the guy with the back home? When he does his thing, the fiber link must be repaired. This is usually accomplished with a splice. The C-Tech course uses an active mechanical splice, which means the integrity of the splice is evaluated by the student as the construction takes place. Other types of splices are also shown, and the advantages and disadvantages are compared. We also demonstrate a method for determining if a field cleave is acceptable by rotating an illuminated fiber and looking for light to leak out the sides. This is called the searchlight effect. Don't you just want to find out more about this stuff? Yeah, well, you came to the right place. We can help. As with all CTEC courses, we are not interested in building an expert, but rather a well-rounded entry-level network cabling specialist with an emphasis on the fiber technologies here someone that will be able again to be productive from day one for their employer. We do, however, expose your students to the more, let's say, advanced equipment and processes they might be involved with as they mature in the field. Fiber is great, but it's not the end of the road. Let's move on to the home entertainment and audio video course and really get things rocking.
In this curriculum, students learn to install multi-room audio systems and high-definition theater systems as effectively as possible. They discover how to place speakers properly for maximum fidelity and how to create a 360-degree soundstage to reproduce the high-def theater experience. Students will work with actual devices and CTEC interactive trainers to learn not only how to employ the highest degree of listening enjoyment, but also how to master all of the skills necessary to install, test, and troubleshoot audio and video connectivity systems and devices. In this slide, we represent the three components of sound we perceive in every sound we hear. All we hear must be interpreted by the brain, and the study of this interpretation is necessary for high-definition sound reproduction, and it's called psychoacoustics. Psychoacoustics is used to create the sound stage, and without it, the high-definition movie experience would be very disappointing indeed. The three components that we have to be aware of are spectral. Spectral tells us what a sound is. Is that keys I hear jingling in the distance? Spatial tells us where the sound is. Oh, I hear the keys jingling. They're right in front of me. Temporal is kind of an odd one. It refers to timing. And what can we gain from the timing of sound? Well, we hear the sound first, and then we hear a reflection or echo of the sound off our environment. The time between the first sound and the echo tells us how big the environment is, how open it is. It gives us all kinds of information about the environment, not just the sound. Well, you heard it here first. Speakers are a critical component in any audio system. We do cover the parts of the speakers. In the trade, the speaker is without an a cabinet or enclosure. It's called a driver. Speakers generate sound, so we have to talk about sound as a form of energy with characteristics like frequency, amplitude, and propagation. The frequency generator on the IAT demonstrates these characteristics as well as investigates frequency directionality. Oof. Room size, shape, and characteristics also play key roles in the fidelity of the sound stage. We teach, or rather you will teach, the Q3 method of speaker placement. That's an industry method. More on that when you take the course. The first choice of speaker placement for multi-room audio systems is in the ceiling. If that's not available, then the walls. If that's not available, well, I guess you could use the floors, but I've never seen that. But because compromises often have to be made on placement, the speakers, the chart on the left, show the second and third choices for speaker placement. The chart on the right shows speakers in a high-definition theater and demonstrates that the sound should be oriented at a seated adult. It's all about the experience, a realistic, high-fidelity, high-definition experience. Nothing else is going to do. We do cover the analog to digital and then the digital to analog conversion process and how sampling is accomplished. The woman on the right corner, uh, she's Susan Vega. Did you recognize her? She's often referred to as the mother of the MP3. They used her music to refine the process. They recorded it over and over again, and when it sounded the same at the end, that was MP3. Right. Remember what I told you about the math, that it was in there? Well, now for all the stems at once. We calculate resistive networks using speakers and prove that these configurations will work for the AVR, but they won't drive the speakers with the necessary current for an efficient and effective audio system. Don't worry. It'll all make sense when you take the course. Talk about realism. Did you hear the bird at the end of that last slide? Well, here we introduce you to the A bus. No, not the A train, the A bus. The A bus distributes audio of, over Cat5 cable. Remember copper? And it does not require an amplified signal. The A bus volume control is the amplifier for the system. It's not powered independently, but receives power over the Ethernet cable. This is PoE, power over Ethernet. Another noteworthy thing is that the volume control has an IR sensor 
which allows a remote control to shine a light, a, a con command at the IR receiver in the room and be transmitted over the CAT5 cable to a device located in another area of the building. So now IR is no longer just line of sight in this application. Now let's consider the high def theater environment. Of course we have numbers like 5.1, 7.1, 5.2, 7.2 and then of course a 54 inch screen but how far away should you be from the screen for the nominal seating distance? I gotta tell you it may be different than what your mom told you when you were young. Sorry about that mom. And what about speaker placement? Don't worry we got you covered. We'll even help you make your walls disappear at least as far as the sound stage is concerned. In high definition theater performance is king and dictates everything. Now sound may be sound but add video and you have the theater experience. We cover all these types of video displays and the characteristics of each and their advantages and disadvantages. But what? You say I don't have time to cover it all here? and they have to take the course. Okay guys, you heard what the man said. We also cover how to connect this all together with your satellites, your DVRs, your DVDs, your DAT tape players, your other players, and even your record players. Well, now I just sit back and enjoy the show. No, not the movie. This show, because we're moving on to telephone systems and the famous VOIP. Man, can you imagine life without phones? Scary. Just think back a few days. Does Sandy sound familiar? I gotta tell you, you see, people use their cell phones, but businesses use wired systems. That's what we bring to you in this course. Students program and install real business telephone systems using interactive hands-on training. This set of skills is highly in demand by small business and is finding inroads even into residential installations. Students assume the role of a systems program administrator, meaning that they'll be in charge of setting up functional digital telephone systems and then maintaining them for security and efficiency. Upon completion of the course, individuals will have the skills necessary to become systems program administrators and be able to install, test, program, and maintain the operation and security of digital telephone systems. This course is completely portable and does not even require a dial tone to be provided as we provide our own. No connection to the outside world is required. Well, you do have to have a place to plug it in for power. Any business that requires fewer than 16 outside lines, that's phone numbers to the layman, and no more than 48 extensions is a prime customer for using a system such as these. For example, doctor's offices, real estate offices, mom and pop motels, pizza parlors, lawyers, bakers, candlestick makers, well, you, you get the point, right? There is a bunch of opportunities out there. And as was mentioned before, homes are also prime customers. The telephone shown on this slide is one that the student will be programming, one very similar to it. There are 18 programmable buttons on this particular phone. Some phones may have more and some may have less, but each button on each phone can be programmed with one of 84 different functions. Imagine the possibilities. The concept, vocabulary, and the reasoning for specific functions extends to all types of phone systems programming. Understanding why these things are set up the way they are. Now that's important. And it's as important as being able to program the system. Three types of programming are covered. That would be station programming, systems programming, and centralized programming. And before I forget, this system is compliant with central office, VOIP, and extension, that would be internal VOIP. In this slide, it's all about satisfying the customer. Just because he advertises a phone number, he doesn't want anyone in his office to be able to pick up that line 
automatically to make an outside call. This requires the programming of automatic line selection. Now, it would be very easy to confuse this with the programming of automatic line assignment. But no worries, your students will be able to keep this customer happy by giving him what he wants, and then in the future tell him what else the phone systems have to offer him to help him make money. Yes, a well-programmed system can make you money instead of just costing you money. And here's a good example of that. When you call Pizza Hut, you hear the phone ring, but no one at Pizza Hut has. They have an employee called an automated attendant answer the phone and provide you with information like, uh, did you know 10 breadsticks are available for $2? And while you're thinking how good those breadsticks are going to taste, the phone then rings at Pizza Hut for the first time and the helpful sales staff will now take your order, which, oddly enough, will perhaps include breadsticks. Well, Pizza Hut sells thousands of dollars of breadsticks a month per store using this technique. Your students will be able to program the two automated attendants that come with the phone system and solve all kinds of problems for their customers because they learned how here. Students as administrators can program these and much more to improve efficiency, cost saving, security, and record keeping. But what's that up there under the caller ID? A SMIDRA. What is a SMIDRA? Oh no, that stands for uh, SMDR. Yeah, that stands for Station Message Detailed Report. And that's a real money maker. Enough said. Take the course. Have you heard of VOIP? I bet you you have. Well, we got your VOIP right here, and that stands for Voice Over Internet Protocol. We demonstrate with this course equipment two types of Voice Over IP. Central Office Voice Over IP, and that's Voice Over IP on the incoming lines from the Central Office that are associated with the phone number. And then Internal Voice Over IP. That's like a, an extension that has a, a really, really long patch cable. I mean a very long patch cable. Key phone systems are everywhere, and most are not optimized for business, their image, or for their sales. That's what an entrepreneur can bring to the table. No investment, cold calls, advertising, flyers, Demonstrate how phone systems should operate. That's all you need. How a company's image is contained in the voicemail system and how to create sales. For instance, calls to Pizza Hut start with the daily special. Then the phone rings so you can make an order. Now that we have those breadsticks and pizzas, let's move on to energy management systems. During this course, participants will configure and program various types of energy management automation systems, including programmable thermostats, sensors, and controls using both wired connectivity, including power over Ethernet, and wireless Z-Wave connectivity. This course includes an overview of green, green applications, electricity, lighting, and lighting design considerations, automation systems, controls, as well as energy management systems design, installation, programming, and troubleshooting. Other than that, there's not a thing in there. First step in energy management is to become energy aware. We discuss all types of energy, but emphasize electricity. Where does it come from? How do we get it? How is it measured, and how much does it cost? We have a device on the energy management training board called Kilowatt, that helps with some of these questions. We can't manage energy if we can't measure energy, and the kilowatt helps us to measure the amount of energy used by an electrical device, like the varied light sources on the EMT. Using other devices provided in the student workstation, again, two students per kit, we're able to compare the electricity used to the amount of light produced. These calculations are the basis of an energy audit that can then be used to produce an energy budget. And voila, you have savings. We call that in the trade energy management. 
Perhaps the biggest contributor to recent changes in energy management today is the smart home powered by the smart grid. Not only does this system allow us to make better energy use decisions, it solves a long time problem for the thousands of micro generation plants popping up all over the place. You see, the problem for generating your own electricity in the past was storage. Those batteries were expensive and they weren't very efficient. Now that the smart grid is out there, any power you generate that you don't use is purchased by the electrical utility. That's energy management and life is good. Part of energy management is having a plan. Not just any plan, but you'll teach your students that a plan must be specific, measurable, attainable, relevant, and time-bound. This slide shows how we reinforce principles covered in fiber and augment them with new principles presented here. Ascending the upper left, light loses intensity with distance. On the lower left, we see how different colors of light can be used for different tasks. Upper left, attenuation. Lower left, usability. Well, different tasks using different light now introduces designing with light. And becoming a light designer is an attractive career choice for many women. You may note on the right a photo of the EMT, the Energy Management Trainer Board. This shows that the different light sources produce light of different colors as well as different intensities. While using electricity for light is easy to demonstrate and to quantify or measure, the largest use of electricity goes to heating and cooling our environment. We present three major types of heat transfer, that's radiation, convection, and conduction. Yeah, that's right, more science. And then introduce the SEER and EER rating for appliance efficiency, all to help manage your energy and save money. Now, let me introduce you to a SAP. That stands for Student Activity Panel. What were you thinking? This is included in the student workstation and includes several devices. What it really represents is the alternative to your best intentions to turn off the lights when you leave the room and turn the thermostat down before you go to bed. Now, don't feel bad. We all have those all too often forgotten intentions. Let me introduce you to my little friend, the programmable thermostat, and a couple of his little friends, the photo sensor, and its big brother, the PIR, which stands for Passive Infrared Detector. These, when properly configured, that means connected, will take the burden of turning the lights off when you leave, and perhaps turn them on when you arrive, as well as automating other activities such as turning things on at dusk or lowering the thermostat at a chosen time. Students learn how to do this and then use it to interact with the EMT by using POE and CAT5 cable and controlled systems on the lower third of the EMT. The top third of the EMT uses device employing the X10 technology to control wall switches and wall outlets. They use commands sent through the electrical wiring to control switches and outlets and can be programmed to control those devices with macros or recorded programs. The middle third uses Z-Wave devices to control switches and outlets, but the commands for this technology are sent by radio frequency, not through the wire itself, and this adds significant improvements in functionality over the X10 technology. Currently, Z-Wave is the cutting edge for scalable, retrofit, and primary installations for electrical controls. Yep, we cover it all. Well, yeah, we cover it all in six short-term, 30- to 40-hour certified training programs. Let's see, what more can I tell you? <laughs> well, you'll just have to come to class to find out. Now, back to Christine and your regularly scheduled programming. So you've heard all about our different programs. 
and each one is a certification program. So at the end, they'll have a, a very large lot of six certifications that the students can take with them. They have transferable job skills. They can make use of our student portion of the website, so they get the most out of their stackable credentials. So whether they're going on to be lifelong learners and going to a college, or they're going on to go into the job market, they have lots of resources available to them. So we offer a broad career base of different careers that our students could go into utilizing their certifications. On the screen you can see many different avenues that they can go into. We can also help you find different uh, jobs in your area. We have resources that we can offer such as job reports, indeed reports, protocol reports that can kind of help you in doing a feasibility study to make sure that there really is a very high demand in your area for the students that will be coming out of these programs. And this is just to give you an idea of some of the different avenues of employment that they can utilize their certifications in. And of course we want to get them high paying jobs. So we were talking about the highest paying blue collar jobs that are out there without a college degree. I mean you can see here telecommunications installers are earning $57,000 and up per year, which is not unlikely to come up on one of these resources uh, that we can give you for the job reports. We're talking we find everything from Best Buy installers making very good money to low voltage electricians making almost $50 an hour. So these are things that you can look forward to for your students and we can help you prove. Okay, so that pretty much concludes our presentation. Multiple questions have come in over the course of the presentation and I'd like to address those. As I said at the beginning, we have David Brady. He is our VP of National Business here to answer your questions, as well as William McGurgan. He is our Director of Training and Programs. He also does a lot of our curriculum, so he'll be able to answer any of your STEM questions or your Common Core questions that may have come up. So I'd like to turn it over to them now. Thank you, Christine, for a very informative session. Christine, with her background in education, tends to be our go-to girl around here when it comes to curriculum strategy, and certainly Bill McGurgan, our Director, who you'll be hearing from shortly. My name is David Brady, and as Christine mentioned, I am responsible for our training partnerships around the country. Before we address a few of the questions that have come in, I want to take this opportunity to thank Larry Benjamin, our master trainer. You know, the true success of our training partners ultimately lies within the hands of our certified instructors in the classroom. And Larry's passion, enthusiasm, and humor is a prime example of how CTEC effectively communicates our model to other instructors and teachers around the world. I really appreciate the insight, Larry, and I look forward to the day that you, the listeners out there, will benefit from CTEC's instructor training model. Like Larry says, I guess you got to come to the training to find out. But before that day comes, I would like to address some of the questions that have come in over the web. One trending question is on, how successful have your training partners been in placing students into jobs? Good question. And Christine, if you could just call up the slide on employers, I'd appreciate it. You may recognize some of these companies. These are just a few of the thousands of companies around the world that have reported hiring our graduates. In fact, Verizon did a study on our graduates in Florida and found that within 90 days they were promoted to field tech managers. And that's what I find to be so great about our model. CTEC provides the training, curriculum, technology, and confidence to get your students into one of the fastest growing technology industries around the world. And one of my core roles is to work very closely with business and industry in order to identify current, future, and near-term opportunities in the technology job market for your students. We do this first by working with the leading technology manufacturers of the world. If you can recall a previous topic that Christine touched on, you will remember international companies that CTEC partners with, such as Leviton, Harman Kardon, JBL, and Kava. Leviton 
over 100 years old, got their start through inventing controls for the gas lamps in New York City. Today, they're a world leader in automated systems, energy management, and data connectivity, both copper and fiber optics. They have multiple divisions around the world. Harman Kardon, JBL, under the umbrella of Harman International, is an audio-video infotainment company. If you ever watch the Grammys or the Emmys, you would be hearing their high-tech sound systems. JBL manufactures those $70,000 speakers that you see sitting all around the theater. CABA, the Continental Automated Building Association, soon to be GABA, the Global Automated Building Association, is a think tank. And we sit on the intelligent building and connected home advisory boards and councils along with Microsoft, Cisco, and a host of their other CTEC industry partners that you see on your monitor here. In fact, our training model led to a team of CTEC certified graduates that worked with a contractor that actually rewired the Statue of Liberty in New York City with fiber optics. Do you know the world's largest scoreboard in Texas? In the Dallas Cowboys Stadium? Well, that was installed by a team that was led by a CTEC certified graduate as well. So you're probably wondering how your schools can get these connections in place too. Well, CTEC has a template that brings this all down to the local level, which leads with our next question. Do you support your certified training facilities with job placement assistance? We provide a school-to-industry template that gets your students, teachers, and administrators involved in the localized process. Now, it's my role to do it nationally, and what I've done here is developed a program through our teachers and job developers and guidance counselors that breaks this process, the same process, down to the local level so you can utilize the strategies we use nationally to be successful in your community. And we recommend starting this day one. The most successful programs that I have seen have adopted this model early on. In fact, uh, some results, we work closely with LaGuardia Community College, and, and as a result of this model, bringing employers into the classroom, getting students and teachers to reach out to contractors and local companies that would be hiring, they were able to get 100% placement in all three of the classes they've just run in the last few years. Uh, Beaver County Community College outside Pittsburgh, they ran a class of dislocated flight attendants, steel workers, and they actually made the connections with industry and they had a contractor from Comcast come in and, and hire the entire class. Uh, Delgado Community College in New Orleans, they run a Yoast program with at-risk youth and there's been reports back through these partnerships in this process that they've gotten over 50% placement. So it's an, a tremendous tool to take advantage of. And as part of the school to industry template, we have curriculum designed specifically for your students to effectively market themselves in the community. It's known as connecting to business. And as we all know, it really comes down to the individual's desire to go out and obtain employment. So we want to make sure that we give them everything they need to be effective. And in this 10-hour program, it goes into ability, attitude, appearance, goal setting. They do uh, mock interviewing in the classroom to prepare for what they're going to encounter uh, when they get interviews from these potential employers lined up. And we have a module from there that goes into any challenges that may come up with someone who may have a criminal record if you're dealing in corrections. And it goes into federal bonding, goes into programs for veterans, and it's specific to our industry, you know, the specific challenges that they're going to come across when they get out. And it provides the direction and the search techniques on how to get there. And there's also a job developer's guide for your job developers or guidance counselors to help 
as part of this process. And that school to industry template ties it all together, starts it from day one, so that you have employers coming in the door and you can be most effective in the process. So thank you. And at this time, there are a few other questions that came in that I want to have Bill McGurgan address. Thank you, David. We certainly do do a lot for our students. In fact, I wanted to share a little story quickly with you that I heard about one of our ex-offenders, specific to addressing the needs of ex-offenders. I work a lot in the state of California in the Department of Corrections. In fact, we have about 26, well now more than 26 different sites. They are running our programs. And the story is about a young lady named Sabrina. And keep in mind, she's in corrections. So within a week of her release, she was actually able to go out and get a job. And now she flies all over the country country doing installations for Walgreens as a contractor. And she uses the skills that she learned in our telecommunications, copper, and fiber optics programs to do these installations. And hers is not the only one. I've heard a lot of stories like this, in fact. So we have about uh, time for one more quick question. I'm going to have Bill McGurgan. As I said, he's our Director of Programs and Training. He's going to address this question. And keep in mind, if you don't have a chance now to get your question answered, I assure you your account rep will be uh, following up with you to address your individual questions as well. So the last question for Bill is, does the curriculum align to state common core standards? Thanks, Christine. Um, as you can see on the slide, uh, yes, we do align to uh, Common Core standards for uh, English language arts, uh, mathematics, and the pending uh, science uh, Common Core standards. And uh, just want to remind you all that this does apply to 46 states with a few exceptions. And uh, any of our instructors or students uh, can, can verify that uh, these, in a lot of cases, are applied science and mathematics courses with, uh, with a large hands-on component. You know, anytime we get a chance to, to bring in a math or an ELA activity, we certainly do that. So if, and if you have specific questions, by all means, uh, let us know. But uh, that's the overview on uh, Common Core Standards. Well, again, this is Christine. I wanted to thank you all for joining us. Thank you for making the time to come out. Anybody whose questions we didn't get to answer in person here on the webinar, we will make sure we follow up through you, uh, with you through email. You can always feel free to contact us. The main office here is 973-726-9000. And you can call and ask with your questions that way. So we thank you again.